Hello everybody, this is GDN, or also known as the Grim Dark Narrator. And as you may have noticed, today I am not actually narrating anything, like my nickname suggests. Today I wanted to talk a bit about a series I am thinking of making. A series that doesn't have anything to do with uh, narration, actually. Well, it kind of does, but I'm not going to be narrating any any novels. I am thinking about narrating, or, well, making some videos of, um, well, Warhammer lore, basically. And that is Warhammer 40k lore. Mainly because I'm not... Um, well, for those of you who, who might watch this and are not... Uh, knowledgeable. I used to narrate Warhammer 40k novels like a couple of years ago, but then um, then Games Workshop uh, sent me an email and asked I uh, remove all the content I did, all the um, narrated 40k novels I did. And well, I did that because it's, otherwise it was a copyright infringement and they might have shut down my channel. Anyway, like I was saying, I wanted to make a series on um, Warhammer 40k lore because even when I back when I did uh, a 40k novel narration, that was actually what most of my viewers came to my channel for, and I myself actually kind of miss covering that topic because Warhammer 40k is actually my favorite uh, my favorite fictional universe. While seeing a lot of channels pop up on YouTube, well, not a lot, but I myself follow at least three of them, channels that actually cover 40k lore, and, um, well, they do it They do it quite well. And that gave me this idea that I could make videos covering, um, I could do videos on individual things, you know, like um, like the Imperium, the, the Chaos Gods, various races etc. But in this video, uh, whoever watches it, and uh, and specifically people who used to follow my channel before, and uh, thankfully they might still be following it now, what well, they thought about this idea. And of course, if you have any specific suggestions, you can always leave a comment below leave your ideas, leave your thoughts, if you have any, in the comments below, and I will, of course, read them and uh, take them into consideration. So, another thing I wanted to cover in this video was, um, well, a brief introduction to the the actual, the actual game, the actual uh, tabletop war game of Warhammer 40k. I wanted to make a lore video about... Uh, the actual setting of the 40k universe, but uh, before I did that, I want to to talk a bit about the the tabletop game itself. Like, for those who maybe aren't a bit uh, knowledgeable or um, don't play it, don't actually play the the 40k war game, like myself, to be honest, I myself don't play the the miniature war game, mainly because of the cost involved and because where I live there's a very minimal presence in the wargaming community. I myself know of no uh, no communities where I live. I live in Romania and I am not uh, aware of any communities playing the, the 40k actual tabletop game with mini with miniatures and such. So yeah, like I like I like I just said, let's talk a bit about um, the actual tabletop game, shall we? So, basic question: What is Warhammer 40k? And like I said, I'm just talking about the the tabletop game. Well, Warhammer 40k is a um, well, consider a gothic science fiction and fantasy tabletop miniature war game. And it's uh, produced by the infamous Games Workshop company. They are a British company and they are based in um, Nottingham, I believe. 
or Nottingham. <laughs> I might have um, mispronounced that. And uh, what's what's this game about? Well, it focuses around these tiny tiny figurines, miniatures. They can be made of uh, of a variety of a wide variety of materials like um, plastic, um, resin, metal. They can be three D printed, or they can be any of these with metal bits on them and such. They can be made from a variety of combinations of materials. And um, well, these uh, these figurines, these miniatures, are then painted by each uh, each player of the game. And they're usually painted in um, in the colors of whichever factions you're playing as. Like, uh, well, if you're a Space Marine player, you can be a Blood Angel, a Ultramarine, a Space Wolf, a Imperial Fist, etc., etc. And they each have uh, they each have different color schemes. And of course, the players paint each individual each individual miniature. Until they paint enough uh, enough miniatures to assemble what is called an army. Well, maybe I should cover this first. Each um, each unit or miniature has a value of points. So a an imperial guard infantryman can count for one point or two points or three points, depending on whatever type of unit he is. You get the idea. Then a tank, a, a Lehman Russ or a Bane Blade can be like 30 points or 50 points or 100 points and uh, well each each actual game of 40k between two or more players requires these armies and each army has a set amount of, of these points like they can be armies of a thousand points or two thousand points or 12,000 points. And that is the unit, let's say, that uh, these collections, these armies are measured by. Now, I'm not the most knowledgeable person uh, to ask about uh, the tabletop game itself, because I myself don't play it, like I said. So my knowledge may be a bit sketchy, and I might get a few things wrong. This video is more of an introductory thing for a the lore series I said I might do. So my apologies if I made some really really stupid uh, comments when talking about uh, the the war game. So and now back to to the info about it. So there are also many players who who form custom armies like they paint them in literally however they want and uh, they can also create custom factions that they name and write uh, lore about and uh, create their own little piece of 40k and i think that's also one of the reasons why the game itself and the setting is is both popular and it encourages um, creativity now the the other important bit concerning these armies and factions is that um, each one or at least the the major ones all the major ones have their own codexes now what are codexes well codexes are essentially rule books well they're also called rule books now each of these uh, rule books each of these codexes has information on the army you're playing. So, of course, let's say a uh, a demon codex. A demon codex will obviously have information on demons, and that includes uh, lore bits and, of course, rules for each of the units of the miniatures it covers. And with the help of these rule books, you can actually have a uh, you can actually play the game. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that Warhammer 40k has been around for a very, very long time. Now, Warhammer 40k has been around for 30 years, and here I'm going to do a uh, brief history of the game. It started in 1987 with the what is called the first edition. 
Back then it was known as Rogue Trader, and it was simply referred to as Rogue Trader because the universe wasn't nearly as fleshed out as it is today. And then proceeded to have a ton of rule books released every couple of years, with the latest being the 8th edition, I think, that was released um, like a few months ago or some weeks ago, something like that. I, I'm not going to cover that because it's way too recent and talking about it, I will inevitably say something wrong or entirely inaccurate. So I will just cover the first seven editions in this. Like I said, the first edition was uh, released in 1987. The second edition was released in 1993. The third edition was released in 1998. The fourth edition in 2004 the 5th edition in 2008, the 6th edition in 2012, and the 7th edition in um, 2014. Of course, among these big ones, there were a lot of expansions released, expanding the game in various ways, stuff like Apocalypse, or Planet Strike, or Death from the Sky, or a bunch of others. Of course, there's also addendums and expansions and additions to each codex in particular. For example, the Space Marine chapters, they're very, very different in how they approach combat, most of them. So releasing a unified codex for all Space Marines will eventually see the release of individual stuff for like Blood Angels or Ultramarines or Flesh Terrors or Space Wolves or etc. And now finally... A bit about its uh, the history of the the setting, not from a lore perspective, but from a more literary perspective. Now, like I said, it uh, this game is pretty old, published in 1987. It was initially created as a spin-off from Warhammer Fantasy, which is um, which is well Tolkien-esque uh, version of 40k. Unfortunately, that bit is now pretty much defunct because um, Games Workshop uh, created uh, Age of Sigmar and literally made the Warhammer Fantasy Warhammer Fantasy planet explode with the End Times series of novels, which created a lot of backlash from uh, the fans of Warhammer Fantasy because uh, the, the Age of Sigmar bit is considered a lot more simplistic. But I'm not here to talk about Age of Sigmar because I know a lot of you hate it. It was just a small uh, small parenthesis. So, now back to 40k. When it was created, the the authors, the creators, and everyone involved clearly had the idea of basically writing a spin uh, a sci-fi spin-off of the Warhammer Fantasy universe. And when they tried to do this, well, tried, when they set on doing this, they took inspiration from a lot of sources, a lot of renowned authors and um, literary works, such as Isaac Asimov, Frank Herbert, H.P. Lovecraft, Tolkien, uh, Robert Heinlein, and many others. And they mixed and they mixed these um, the works from these authors and others, like The Foundation, Dune, um, stuff from H.P. Lovecraft. You can inevitably see Lovecraft's influences in the, the portrayal of chaos in the 40K universe. And of course, the portrayal of uh, Space Marines, taken from... Um, from Starship Troopers, the the Roughnecks, the the actual Space Marines, since Space Marine wasn't... Uh, Games Workshop might have patented the Space Marine term, but uh, the terminology was there considerably earlier, especially from the novel Starship Troopers and other other sources like like the Aliens movie, for example... And, uh, of course, um, the Sardukar from, from Dune, they're also fairly similar. Of course, not to those 
ridiculous levels that the space marines display, but they were clearly inspired by those uh, those literary characters. And now the universe itself is a is a heavy mix of um, medieval themes, baroque, surrealist, mixed with a lot of gothic elements as well, and a bunch of other a bunch of other themes from from really really different um, different periods of history. So, for example, we have themes from the the two great uh, the two world wars we have themes from um, from great britain's imperialist era we have themes from imperial rome of course there's the the mighty imperium we have uh, of course the inquisition like the practices in medieval spain the catholic inquisition we have of course uh, nazis we have of course um soviets like a lot of themes taken, sometimes literally copied and pasted from those settings into the 40k universe, and and it works. Surprisingly, it works a lot more than, than even the original creators might have thought it would. Now, I know I probably missed a lot of vital information to be spoken about uh, the universe, but uh, like I said, this is an introductory video. And um, I initially wanted to to make a separate video just talking about uh, why I wanted to do this and um, my plans for it. But but I'm actually glad I got to cover both topics in a single video. Now, one last aspect I want to cover, and this might be maybe the most relevant in regards to w why I'm doing this, like I said... And that is the appeal of the 40k universe to me personally and to everyone else, in my opinion. So, why do people love Warhammer 40k? I think people love Warhammer 40k because, for one, it is not a uh, good guys versus bad guys kind of universe. In the Imperium, well... In the entire 40k universe as it is, there are really no good guys in the traditional sense. There are no goody-two-shoes factions or characters. And I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of the fans and the followers of the setting are, are actually happier with that than if it were a classic good versus evil scenario. Because... There is good in Warhammer 40k, but there is also a lot, a lot of evil. And I think many, many of the fans see this as uh, maybe a bit more realistic than a lot of the other fantasy and even dark fantasy stories where the good guy kills the bad guy and saves the world. You know, the classic scenario. In Warhammer 40k, good guys... Well, the the guys that are mostly good, let's say, they lose a lot. And there's a constant pain and there's a constant suffering surrounding the humans in the universe because there are a lot of other factions and races. And I, like I said, I think this is a big draw because, well, humans in general are pretty, pretty attracted to, to the darkness, in my opinion, so... A grim dark setting like 40k is was always gonna have its uh, fair share of um, of people it attracted through its sheer brutality and vision of eternal war and bloodshed and bleak hopelessness in a uh, in a dystopian setting taken to its most ridiculous levels, and I think that's one of the reasons. I myself love it so much, and a lot of others do as well. Well now, like I said, hopefully this will be the first video in a series of many covering pretty much everything you can think of regarding the 40k universe. 
Well, now of course this all depends on um, on how the first few of these videos do. That will um, that will pretty much dictate if I do a if I do this a regular thing or not. Honestly, if this gets like at least two or three times the views um, my regular narrations get, uh, I think I'm I'd be happy with that. And that would be a good, uh, a good solid place to, to start a a big series on. Like I said, any suggestions or complaints or praises or anything in between, you can, you can, you can actually please leave in the comments below. And I'm sure, I'm sure they'll help as well. As for the sources of my information, and the lore and things I'll be covering. I will do my best to not uh, to not actually read, narrate stuff already written on uh, wikis. I will try to to nar well not narrate it, but I will try to to formulate it in such a way that um, I can blend it with my own opinion and my own way of um, covering things. And of course, in the videos, I will use artwork covering the various topics. I will do my best to keep the artwork relevant, especially in the, the broader topics. And uh, that's it for now. I will do another video about the, the lore behind the universe itself, covering uh, a little bit about each faction, or the sub-factions of the Imperium, chaos, and a few other things. I will not go into detail, it will be just a brief overview of the universe. And hopefully, if that gets uh, a few views, I will, um, I will continue doing them. Until then, though, I would like to thank you very much for um, bearing with me, for staying with me through my ramblings, and uh, hopefully I will see you on the next video. I've been Grim Dark Narrator, and uh, once again, thank you very much for watching, and uh, have a really nice day.